Hey guys! An alloy consisting of three alkali metals, cesium, sodium and potassium, has a record low melting point among all metals and their alloys, at about minus 78 degrees Celsius. This is much lower than the melting point of thallium amalgam, which is only minus 61 degrees. At room temperature, all three metals are solids. In order to obtain a liquid from them, they must be either heated or mixed with each other. Now I pour liquid cesium from the ampule, and it's already beginning to dissolve potassium and sodium. To speed up the dissolution, I'll stir this mixture thoroughly. The mixture of these components is liquid with a wide range of ratios of each element. However, with a ratio of 40% cesium, 48% potassium and 12% sodium, the result is a liquid that freezes at a record low temperature of minus 78 degrees Celsius. The resulting liquid alloy can be very easily drawn into a syringe. Due to the presence of cesium, this alloy is much more reactive than a typical sodium-potassium alloy, thus it can easily catch fire in air. In truth, the reactions of this alloy are not very different from those of the rubidium-cesium alloy in my previous video. So, this time I included fewer reactions in this video. To solidify this alloy, I decided to pour it into liquid nitrogen. It solidified quickly in liquid nitrogen, but upon removal, it quickly reverted to a liquid state. When all the liquid nitrogen had evaporated, the alloy caught fire after a short time. I didn't add this alloy to water, instead I took ice and poured liquid nitrogen on it to make it even colder. If this alloy ignites in air, then this is what will happen if we add it drop by drop to liquid oxygen.
This resulted in a very violent reaction. Now let's see what happens with liquid chlorine. You might have thought uh, that there uh, would be an extra reaction with bromine, and when you saw these shots, you were hopeful. However, it's not bromine, it's nitrogen tetroxide, or in other words, liquid nitrogen dioxide. As you noticed, the rule that a very strong oxidizing agent and a very strong reducing agent react predictably and very violently does not always hold true. Judging by the comments on the last video, you enjoyed the reaction of injecting into a tomato, so I decided to repeat it with this alloy. It was interesting to see how the tangerine would behave, given its denser appeal compared to that of a tomato. Well, it was definitely necessary to include a reaction with some kind of acid. This time I chose fluorosulfuric acid. As you understand, this alloy is very similar in properties to the rubidium cesium alloy, but I decided to make this video as any way to showcase the most feasible alloy in the world. I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave comments and even better I'll become my patrons to whom I express my sincere gratitude in every video. My dear patrons, I express my sincere gratitude to you for helping me financially. This makes it easier for me to create chemical content. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.